This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your concerns and tell your story about the child welfare family court system. I'm Dennis Lawrence. Next to me is Maria Malin. Uh, you know, recently we attended a rally in Lansing, Michigan at the state capitol. Today we'll be going back to July 27, 2014. I personally had a great time speaking to everybody and hearing the different stories and, and listening to how their opinions on how we can change the system. First up speaking in Lansing, Jesse McKenna. I have two children. My son will be 10 in November. My daughter had her seventh birthday on Monday. This is the second year in a row that I have not been allowed to wish my daughter a happy birthday. I was the primary caretaker of my two children. My ex-husband has abused both of us. He has been convicted of domestic violence. He has been substantiated, which is a funny little word that CPS uses yep. to mean that they're not convicted or charged with a crime, but that they they found reasonable evidence that it was committed. He duct taped our son's mouth shut when he was nine months old because he was crying. CPS did nothing. I have never been convicted of a crime nor charged with one. I do not drink. I do not smoke. I do not use drugs unless they have been prescribed to me. And even then, I'm leery of taking them. My ex-husband, however, as I mentioned, has been convicted of domestic violence in Livingston County. He has been substantiated by CPS in Oakland County for physical abuse of our son. He has been investigated by CPS after our daughter has made allegations of sexual abuse. At that point, after five years, they finally decided to suspend his parenting time for three weeks while he in turn had filed for custody. He had us kicked out of our home, which I was awarded in the divorce, but was having a hard time keeping up with the payments because he had also stalked me and cost me my job. Family court is a totally different beast in the world. Abusers of children are not just parents or caretakers, they are also judges. Right here you see Linda Hallmark. She's been on the bench since Governor Engler appointed her many years ago. Oftentimes, our judges are up for election and they get put right back in because of blind voting. She told me in court that because we were staying at La Casa's domestic violence shelter, I was selfish. We were not staying there for what my husband, my ex-husband did to me at the time. We were there because of what my daughter told a CPS worker during a interview of what he did to her. They placed us there after they put her into custody. I had, at that point, joint custody and joint legal. He had what the judge at the beginning thought was liberal parenting time. He got them for three hours on Tuesdays and five hours on Sundays, unsupervised. After the divorce was finalized, he was awarded increased time, which was to include 
three hours on Tuesdays and every other weekend from Saturday at 5 until Sunday at 5 and two phone calls a week. He has successfully tried to alienate me from my children by telling them stories. He has told my children that I don't want to talk to them because by law, I am now on supervised visits. I have to pay to see my children or I have to have my mother drive an hour and a half to spend the day with them. Because she told me I was unstable, there is no evidence to indicate CPS told friend of the court that there was no reason to change custody, that they were safe and happy with me. Well provided for, I was the PTO treasurer of their school for two years, very heavily involved in their school. He doesn't know who the principal is. I have had to file five federal complaints against my son's doctors because they refuse to provide me records, which by law they are not allowed to do. Until there is an order restricting me from having access, they are in violation of federal law. Judge Hallmark, through my Facebook page, I have found at least seven or eight other cases out of her courtroom where a protective parent has had their children taken away. The worst of which was a father in Oakland County who had very strong concerns for the welfare of his two young daughters who were living in the custody of their mother who had remarried a registered sex offender. And according to one of Linda Hallmark's referees, she had looked into it and said that the sex abuse was not that bad. He, she thought his children would be okay. He was also put on supervised visits. I am not allowed to call my children. If they call me, I am allowed to answer the phone. Thanks to Verizon's 15-hour uh, outage last night, I got a voicemail from my daughter at about 5.30 this morning. They called me about 7 o'clock last night. I am not allowed to call them back if I miss their call. My children have cried that no one is helping them. No one is helping them come back to mom. CPS has investigated but done nothing because they will go to his home, interview in his home with him in the next room. They have drawn pictures of physical abuse. He has choked my son. He has shoved his head into a wall. And most recently I have learned that he has threatened to kill my son. And these are not for offenses like he set something on fire. These are for things like spilling pancakes on the floor. My daughter cries every night. They have now been allowed by my ex-husband because he is the one who is permitted by court order to dictate when I see my children. I have no say. He sets the schedule and if I can't make a date, it's gone. He is allowing them to spend the night as long as my mother is there. And my daughter drew me a picture on the way to drop them off of her in two different beds and labeled them mom's house and dad's house and said that she is safe at mom's and scared at dad's. But they don't do anything because as the divorced mother, I am the alienator. I am seeking only to rip their father out of their lives when what is actually happening is I'm trying to protect them, which is oftentimes the case. Domestic violence is often looked at as an accusation made in family court to take the children away. It is never seen as a way to try and protect the children. And what I'm trying to do now is raise awareness that these judges need to be educated. Livingston County recently had safe havens training. Our circuit court judges were there. They spent the entire day learning about domestic violence, child abuse, and how it is skewed and the myths that are portrayed in family court and how they need to be dispelled. Abusers should not have custody. Linda Hallmark is abusing my children by forcing them to live with someone who is hurting them. By denying them a home with me who has never hurt them and forcing them to live with a drug addict 
and an abuser. These judges are all over Michigan, and they're all over the country, and they are all over the world. There are women, like Maria, who's been jailed for trying to protect her children. There are cases that have been issued gag orders, which is why you don't hear about this problem. And what I'm trying to do now is start a nonprofit called Promote Judicial Awakening, to where we can raise the funding to bring Safe Havens training to all of our Michigan judges, and eventually to make it a mandatory training for all family court officials, from CPS workers, all the way up to our judges, the front of the court, the referees, and make them aware. Part of the problem is that we've got an election coming up. If you look at your ballot, you will see in Oakland County, for instance, there are seven positions open for circuit court. There are nine candidates, seven of whom have the word incumbent beside their name. And people will vote blindly. They do not look into people's records. They do not court watch. They say, oh, they've been on the bench before. They must be great. They will never affect my life. The governor might, but these judges, they, they don't have any impact on us or my family. Let's just leave them there. You need to educate yourselves and vote smart. Learn who the candidates are. Write your senators and make them aware of court licensed abuse because it needs to stop. And it's going to take all of our Michigan voters to do that. Thank you, Jesse. Up next, another family court victim speaks, Daniel Evans. My name is Danielle Evans, and um, my son was taken away from me about four years ago. <clears throat> Um, I have um, three children. My oldest will be 13 this year. I have a son that will be nine this year and a daughter that's seven. And um, I pretty much raised all my children by myself with the help of my family. Um, my oldest son's father was in and out of his life really wasn't consistent with visits and um, taking care of him until he married this woman who couldn't have kids. And she convinced him to go to front of the court and petition for custody of our son. And that's exactly what he did. Um, he, he took advantage of um, a situation where my youngest daughter, um, she has a health crisis that she deals with every day. She has sickle cell, sickle cell disease and she was going in and out of the hospital. And it was a situation where I almost lost my daughter. She was in the hospital for two weeks um, in critical condition. And my son's father, who I felt like really cared about our son, you know, I let him come and get our son with no problems. Um, he could come and go as he pleased. I just wanted him in our son's life. He went and hired a lawyer and um, took me to court. And the friend of the court conciliator was so rude to me. I mean, I felt like I was on trial for murder. She said that I spent too much time with my term terminally ill child to give my son the care that he needed. And it's been four years of fighting. Um, I've been show calls multiple times. I've told them my situation. I couldn't work because of my daughter being sick. Um, I went through school just like the lady that spoke before me. I went to school, got my bachelor's degree, got my cosmetology license right. to be able to provide for my children. And instead of front of the court showing me a little bit of support or anything, they said to me, we don't care what you're doing. You need to quit school. Go get you a job at McDonald's, we don't care. This guy needs child support. And I said, ma'am, I'm trying the best that I can. 
you know, and they just, they didn't care. I had to spend a weekend in jail. Um, I was threatened to have my other kids taken from me. And in the meantime, my oldest son's father caught a court case and he's a registered sex offender and he has more rights than I have to my child. I go to try to get my son, him and his new wife and her family, they call the police on me every time I try to go get him. My son is being abused. I've taken my son to um, Sparrow to get photographs done. Um, my 12-year-old son, who will be 13 again in September, has attempted suicide on two occasions just this year. And I've been going any and everywhere trying to get this boy help, and nobody wants to help me. He's self-mutilating himself. This is stuff that a 12-year-old, if they, I mean, what's going on in the household over there that my child feels like that's his only outlet? Thank you. He's been running away. Um, <clears throat> his father keeps putting protection orders against me. Um, they basically have CPS in their pockets. It feels like they got the Lancet police in their pockets. I'm doing everything that they tell me to do. File my complaints with the friend of the court and nobody listens to me. They're telling me that I'm alienating them because I'm too angry. No, I'm not angry. I'm passionate about my child. And um, his father uses the court system to try to get back at me. And I'm just hoping, my judge is Judge Economy. I'm hoping he does the right thing. August 13th is when we go in front of him at 1.30. And right now, my son is, he has ran away and has been gone from his, his father for almost six weeks and nobody sees nothing wrong with that. And I'm, I'm just trying to get my son back. I don't want him to be a statistic. That's all I'm trying to do, get my son back. I'm not trying to take him away from his father. I just want equal time and rights to my child. Thank you. The sights and the sounds of that day back in July, we really had a good time. And I thought we really brought out a lot of injustice that we are seeing in the family court and child welfare system. We're going to go to a video we put together with some of the uh, still pictures from that day. Let's go to our Lansing Rally album.
If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. Let's go to Legally Kidnapped. Good morning. I'm the trial judge in your child abuse case. You are going to waive the reading of the allegations against you. Your children are in foster care placement because the attorney for the children said that they are very afraid of you. I have worked with the attorney for the child for years and I believe everything she says. I understand you did not get served with the summons to this case. That doesn't matter. You're here anyway. If you need counsel, we have a free attorney available for you who is certified by the court. If you hire private counsel, he better behave in this court. I will not hesitate to sanction and fine him. I'll write reports to his disciplinary committee for the slightest infraction. Your motion for immediate return of your children is denied. I find there is imminent risk of harm to life or limb for all of your children. You have leave to refile the motion for immediate return of the child, but that hearing will take place over the next four months because my calendar is busy. I will deny your motions for privately retained psychologists to testify because of the risk of trauma to the child because of repeated psychological evaluations, so you'll have to go with what the court psychologist says. I will qualify that psychologist in the area of psychology and allow him to offer an opinion on any area he wishes to discuss. I will find his testimony credible and his report helpful to the court. I will sustain all objections as to the psychologist's qualifications, his disciplinary history, his methodology, and his reliability. That's all irrelevant to this case. I will cut short cross-examination of the court's professionals to save time. I will cut short opposition to motions filed by the Child Protective Services. I used to work for Child Protective Services, and I know they are never wrong. I will deny motions to get records, reports, and other evidence. I will not allow subpoenas of either the foster care agency or the Child Protective Services. That's not important. This case is about how you abused your children. I will conduct a fact-finding hearing, which I will decide based upon the preponderance of the evidence that you abused or neglected your children, and then I will dispose of this matter based upon clear and convincing evidence that you abused this child. I will conduct permanency hearings once every six months. You may or may not get a report from Child Protective Services in advance of that permanency hearing. If you don't file an appeal, the appellate court will show you and your attorney the seriousness of hurting a child. I will entertain motions and I will issue orders without notice to you. Right now you have an order of protection against you. There is no contact with your child until further order of the court. If you violate this order, I will hold you in contempt here and I will report you to the district attorney's office to commence criminal prosecution against you as well. This does not violate the prohibition against double jeopardy. If any of your privately retained professionals commit misconduct, I will file complaints with their licensing committees. I see that you have an order of child support for the child. You will continue to pay child support. You do not have to see the child to pay support. I will incarcerate you if you do not pay support. Throughout this case, I will be on the bench whenever I feel like it. If I am not here, you will have to wait until my court staff tells you that the case is adjourned and you will return months later. All motions will be continued to that date and I will not have another judge preside in my absence. This case is too important for that. Any attorney who fails to appear before me will get an order to show cause for contempt unless they work for the government. Your failure to appear before me will result in default and I will dispose of the case forthwith. Do you have any questions? How do you plead? This case will now be continued for the next six months. Have a good day. We'll be back after these messages. Parental rights. Freedom to raise up your sons and your daughters according to your conscience and convictions. In America, this has always been a privilege. But would you believe there are those who wish it were otherwise?
this traditional parent-child relationship is currently under a shadow of political threat. Help preserve parental rights. Support the Constitutional Amendment. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us today for another edition of Silent Voices. You can catch us the same time next week, same channel. Until next week, my dear friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make the, the difference. difference.